Good afternoon, everyone. Let me know if you can see the slide. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own the Stock Swoosh. And I'm going to talk to you today about, well, pretty much what I do with trading is I trade gaps, and that is the strategy I trade. That's what I'm going to talk today about. And even though the topic is how you can earn $20,000 a month trading, you can earn much more than that. You can earn $20,000 in one trade. It's, it's the whole idea of choosing particular stocks, and for me it's the gap, okay? And, <coughs> excuse me, getting the direction right. If you do that, you can be in and out very quickly, okay? Sometimes in a few minutes, sometimes in a few hours. In fact, before I even start, let me just pull up the market here. Hold on one second. I know if everybody can see the chart. Can everybody see this? So, this is a gap. Before I start talking about the, the topic, this is a live gap that's happening in the market, which is, this is the SPY, this is the ETF for the S&P, we're gapping down. This is selling up. So I have up here the post market, it's 435. 35 minutes after the close, market's continuing to sell off. So what is the market doing? It is right now gapping down. I'm explaining to you the market's gapping down. So this is a live gap. Now, I don't know where we open tomorrow at 9.30. Just show you here the cues. We're gapping down in this too. <coughs> you can see here where we closed. You can see where we closed here at 325.76. We are now at 325.44. This is a live gap in the queues. Everybody see? So we're gonna talk about gaps today. I'll take this off here and go over. And then we will discuss. So very interesting because, you know, the market's selling off right now, like 30 minutes after the close. So we'll see where we go tomorrow. If you have any questions, you can feel free to email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, or Skype. Okay. So time is very valuable. I find this in my life, particularly as the years go on, I feel like, gosh, I always have so many things to do. So many things I could be doing in any given day. So the faster I can get in and out of a trade and make money, the better. I actually shorted the queues today as a day trade. And I got out pretty early. I have that trade in here. I could have been in it all day. I had other things planned on my schedule already to do today. So, you know, time is just one of these things that's so valuable. Also, when you get out of a trade with profit and the profit's there, then you know that it's booked. It's solid, solid as a brick. You've got the trade in, you've got the money. It's never over to the fat lady sings. That's the same we used to have doing mortgages. If the money isn't yours until you booked it and you are out of the trade. Oh, here's the market. Okay, so here is the market trade. I knew I stuck it in here. We shorted the market today at 332.02. An advanced risk would have been 2,000 shares. Now this is on margin, just so you know. You could have taken 100 shares. You could have done a put in this. Risk was 25.30. Exit was 3.30.70. You saw there where I showed you, the low of the day was 3.25 and change. So I could have been in this for five more dollars. It was in the, but this was a nice trade. It was 2640. In out. Boom boom. It was really quick and really fast. And here, here's the bigger picture. So I was talking before about how you can make all of this money trading. Well, you tr make money trading, getting the direction right, and you have to have the momentum. So this was a short. The cues gap down today. Now let's go back and look at it. It was Friday the 7th. Okay, here was Friday. So we closed here Friday, 4 o'clock. 
boom, opened here in the morning, 9.30 a.m., fell, sold off. So you can see this was, I guess, 11.15 I clipped this, but we were out of this earlier, and then you saw we fell all the way and closed into here. So how do you earn a lot of money in the market getting momentum in the right direction? Then you can be in something for a few minutes, like I was today in the Hughes trade, or you could be in, in a few hours, which you could have been in this trade. You could have been in all day. So you could have shorted this where we did it roughly around 332 and stayed in the trade into the close. Down into 325 and 70 something and change. It was a really nice call. We did this trade very fast and very quick. Okay, we were in, in the first couple minutes of the day. So one of the, th the things that I do very well is it's like I'm, I'm throwing a dart every day and trying to hit a bullseye, which I hit today. That's what I do. I, every day I stand in front of the dartboard, which is the market. I take a dart and I try to hit a bullseye every single day. A lot of days I do. Some days I miss. Those are the days where I take a loss in the trade. But every day, that's how I look at my job, trying to throw, just get one bullseye, because that's literally all that you need. And then really the sky's the limit for how much money that you could make. You could have taken 10,000 shares of this today if you had the buying power to do it, okay? And people do, people do trade with huge size in the market. Oh, here's the one minute. So here, <laughs> this was, I mean, we were in and out so early, but there, here's, you can see the gap better. Closed Friday, boom. Gap down here this morning. Here's the momentum. What's happening? This is selling, okay? So this is a sell-off that happened in the QQQs today. Now, I did not do a new put in this. I thought about it, and then I was actually a little ultra conservative today because I had a bunch of other puts already on in other ticker symbols. But I could have called a put in this today too. But we did the day trade in it. But how do you make money in the market? Chunk it out. You could make 20,000 in one trade or you could make 1,000 a day or 2,000 a day, whatever. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. This is not, training is not investing. You're not investing. Somebody said, oh, I don't wanna, uh, I'm thinking about, here, hold on, let me pull it up. We did put some BYND. Somebody, this, and these worked, okay, by the way. And somebody said, oh my God, should I buy this here? I said, no, why would you buy this here? Why would you buy this? The momentum is not to the upside in BYND. The momentum is to the downside. So just to quickly go over this, I don't have this trade in, the, in this class today, but this closed here on Thursday, gapped down Friday in earnings, and then opened today and fell, and fell off a cliff. High today was 110, low was 103 and change. So we did puts in this and we day traded this Friday. We did the 110 and the 100 puts. Shelly, I see you in here. Did you do good in the BYND? Shelly is on the options letter. Did you do okay in this? Shelly? How'd you do? Should have gotten out of that today. It was a nice move. That was, no, it wasn't today. It was Friday. It was Friday, Shelly. I called those puts Friday. I didn't call any new trades today. You have to email me, Shelly. There was nothing today. It, no, no, no. This is, this over here, this is a daily chart. I have a lot of different time frames up here. Shelly, you better email me. That trade was Friday. This is a this is a daily, but this is a 15 minute. This is a five, this is a two, this is a one. You can see the gap anywhere though, Robert. So anyways, how do you make $20,000 a month you have to be very, very specific with what you were doing and then also take size, okay? Take size in it. 
You understand what I'm saying? I think a lot of people, once, once you start trading, once you get into it, once you're doing it, get bitten by the market bug. And once you're bitten by the market bug, it's really hard to get off of it. I think you're bit. That's it. You've got it. And you kind of just have to roll with it. I think a lot of people get frustrated when they start trading. They don't find success right away. So they lose money or take a class and it doesn't work and they want to quit. You can't quit if you really want to do this. And you can't quit if you have the market bug because you're really not going to quit anyways. You're just going to keep trading and losing and trading and losing until you get serious about what you're doing. Except the fact that you're interested in doing this, that you want to do it, that you're excited to do it, that you're motivated to do it and throw yourself into it and give it all you've got. That's pretty much what I did when I started, okay? Yeah, Shelly, check and then email me. You can email me and I'll check it tonight. There, were, there weren't any trades today on the options letter though, Shelly, so you know. But if, if there's a problem with your email, we have to get it corrected. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you've got to move forward with this and say, you know what, I understand that I am interested in this. I'm hooked. And you commit yourself to making money trading and decide that this is something that you want to do. The nice thing about trading is that you can make money trading in the US stock market from anywhere in the world, okay? So there are people in my live trading room that live all over in different countries, different time zones. I like New York, I live in New York because it's convenient for me with the time zone, Eastern time zone, okay? But the question is always, how do you get to this level of success? How can you actually support yourself as a trader if you want to do it for a living? How do you get to the point where you can rely on it as a consistent source of income? That's where I was talking about, about the chunking it out and taking profits. Like BYND's trades went today. The, the ideal thing was to get out. The trade isn't going to go on forever, ever and ever and ever and ever. That's investing. This is just trading. Take it in, get out. In, get out. Okay? So you need a strategy, you need a focus, and you need a system in order to be successful. And then, then you put size on top of that. And like I said, not only can you make $20,000 a month, you can make that in one trade, you can make more than that a month. Robert, I specifically teach all of the entries in my class. My class is this weekend, it's a 16 hour class. But I make the determination what stock I'm doing and what direction in the gap in the morning, the pre-market, based on a rating system. I teach that in my class as well. I could never go over that in an hour. That's what the, the class is, that's two days. I don't know what you mean by way gone. As I was saying before, momentum, when you find it, when you can pinpoint it and pick it, it does not disappear. It goes. That is the whole purpose of doing trading and making money. You're trading momentum. And you can use this for options. You can use this for day trades. You could even use it for swing trades. But this isn't long-term investing, because sometimes we'll do trades like today, like we shorted the QQQs, which was a day trade. The market's still in an uptrend. Don't kid yourself. The market is still strong. It's strong as a beast. The spy made you hives today, so did the banks. So the reality is I will be in and out of something, playing the momentum, and once it comes in, getting out then, because that's what that is. Active trading is chunking it. Long-term investing is not. Long-term, you wouldn't want to be short this market. That would be ridiculous. Although there might have been some long-term shorts coming into the SPY today. That's silliness to me. It's as silly as going long BYND. Okay? So don't get confused what trading is compared to investing. And I do think people mix it up. And people might mix it up because they're going to a lot of different free webinars and people are mixing up what they're saying and they're going to different topics and talking about different things. And you might have an IRA that you have long-term investments in and then you have a separate trading account that you day trade in. Don't get mixed up in your head. If that mixes you up, don't touch your IRA. Leave it be. Put that money in a 401k or have someone else invest it that's a qualified person. Focus on your active day trading account. Don't get all in your head. It can screw up your choices with the things that you make. I find it is difficult for people to flip as far as the timing of things, okay, and looking at trends particularly too. But getting back to what I was saying, my goal every day is to hit a bullseye. This is extremely challenging. Now, I'm very good at doing it, okay, but I've been doing this since 2008. 
it took me three years to create my system. So I've really been good at this really for like about 10 years. Okay. But getting back to what I was saying, even I don't get it right every time. Even I sometimes I throw the dart and it lands there. Just barely close, but not quite in the center. And this is what you want, okay? Because this is where all the money is. In a very small, tightly condensed area where you have to get the timing right, you have to get the direction right, and then of course with size, thousands of shares or you know lots of contracts, which is really the same thing as thousands of shares and an option, you really, really have lots and lots of profit. Okay, and that's what makes it exciting to trade. So timing is critical. Timing is critical for day trades because I gotta be out of them by four o'clock. Timing is critical for options because if I take something too early and it goes, I might not make any money. And if I take it and it goes, but it goes the week after the expiration, it doesn't matter, I can lose in it, even if I get the direction right, okay? Do I increase my size with confidence? Robert's asking me that. I have not increased my size for a while now. But you, I felt myself out. I started doing options. When I first started doing them, I was risking about $1,500 a trade. Then I really quickly jumped it up to like $7,500 a trade. I lost in that trade. I'll never forget. It was the end of the year. It was around Christmas. It was a week between Christmas and New Year. This is a, I don't know, this is a number of years ago. And I lost in the trade and I was so pissed at myself. I had the money to lose, but I was pissed at myself because I took too much risk. One, I didn't feel comfortable with it. Two, I, was, I knew I shouldn't have taken that much risk. I started out really good trading options. Then I increased my risk too much, too big, too fast. Then I dropped it back down. And then I slowly have now increased it again over the last several years. So you have to kind of feel yourself out. If you take a trade and you're nervous about it and you go to bed at night or you're nervous when you're in it live, you know that your risk is too big. That's how you know. It doesn't have anything to do with how much money you have. You could have 100 grand in your account and if you're in a trade overnight and you have $5,000 at risk and you can't sleep, then your risk is too big. So you have to feel yourself out. So I've kept my size this size where I'm at with everything for a number of years now. I'm probably at the point where I could consider risking more, or maybe I will start to do different types of longer term investing with, with my own IRA or with uh, you know longer term options. That's something that I kind of have been thinking about in the back of my mind, but, but I haven't really made any critical decisions on yet. I don't know. But you know, it, it's at the point where I could, but I haven't because I'm very comfortable. So when you're comfortable with your trades, you really will stick to something a lot. And actually BYD is a good example. The trade was down after I took it. I took it right away on Friday. The trade rallied up and it was down. I kept talking about it and talking about it and talking about it in the trading room on Friday. How much conviction I had in it. And then I said, finally, at whatever point, I don't know if it was 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, or whatever time it was, I said, well, this isn't gonna go till Monday. I was right, it went today. I was, I was right. But when you have high levels of confidence, what the worst thing you can do is increase your size and then you know, fall off a planet based on fear. The fear creeps into people when they bump up their size and affects their confidence if it's too much. It's like if you were going to, uh, like I'm shopping for apartments right now. It's like if you were going, to, going out with a realtor to buy a house and they're showing you properties and the mortgage is something that you could afford, but it's really probably too much for you where you're not gonna feel comfortable, then, then you know. It's like, yes, you could afford it. Yes, you got pre-qualified with the mortgage lender, but you really probably shouldn't spend that much. Do you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, nobody said you have to max out your size in an account no one said you have to max out your pre-qualification when you're buying a home or an apartment, okay? It does have to do with confidence level. So anyways, this was another one we did. It was Etsy. I don't know if you've ever heard of this company. This had earnings last week, stock closed here, and then it had a gap down. So what do I do? I got up in the morning, I rated the gap based on the system that I created. This is why I teach in the class. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, Etsy is gonna fall 
let's short this, let's do it. So we shorted it and the stock here, you can see touched around 170, dropped down here, dropped down, fell through 155. This was a day trade, this was a short. So I was right in the directional bias, it's done not rally. This is a 200 pair moving average, it could have got bought on this, could have rallied, didn't. It was a short. You only need one good trade to make money each per day. So trading is fun once you feel confident in the system and that is why learning is very important. So everybody that's in my trading room is there and has done the Golden Gap course. Now this week I'm offering an open house. If you'd like to attend that, you can email me for the information, but in order to join the live trading room to get my trade calls like Etsy, like the market today, to hear what I have to say about things, you must take the class and learn because you will need that confidence level at some point. At some point to put the trades on, to put the money on, to put the risk on, you'll need it. And without a system, without the confidence, it's very stressful to trade, especially in this market. Now I say that because Things have not been making sense. You have the SPY at new highs. You have the Q gapping down. You have this uh, terrible economic data that we had last week, tech falling, and you have JPM and gold at new highs. If you don't know what you're doing right now or looking for very, 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 very specific symbols to trade, you're all over the place. Normal things aren't working. Why? Stuff isn't making sense. You have a cyber attack on oil on the, on the pipeline. Oil rallied at the first part of the day today. And the market was up. The spy was at new highs. Crazy town, especially on top of the economic data last week. Now, while fundamentals and uh, technicals don't always go together, in this case, one would think they would have, okay? Now, we sold off today, and we failed in the spot at any move higher, and we're selling off like hotcakes tonight. It's almost five o'clock. But the reality is last week, last week, I mean, we had no reaction really to what was going on. Terrible, terrible unemployment data. And just the whole backdrop of COVID and everything that's going on. Yeah, Etsy, I never bought anything from Etsy. Someday I'm sure I will. Any other questions here? Anyways, if you want to unlock the keys to your own success, you've got to get focused. Think of the bullseye. So one strategy, that's what I use to day trade and do the options. What is the system and strategy I use? I termed my system and I called it golden gaps. Unlock the keys to your own personal profit potential in the market. Learn how to trade one strategy that can pay you the income that you need, which is virtually any amount. Because again, it only has to do with the amount that you're risking but it all has to do with gaps. And it all has to do with momentum. Gap trading is where the real money moves and the momentum of the market take hold. That's how as one individual trader, you can make money without having a million dollars in an account. Trading gaps makes it possible to trade for a living for you as one individual person because you don't need an astronomical amount of money. And when you're trading options, guess what? You don't need any more than the cost of what you're paying in the option. You don't have to worry about margin. Now let's talk about Boeing. I didn't see how this closed today. This was back in April. We did a gap in this. Here, it was closed here, gapped up, fell, closed here, fell, closed here, open, fell. So we had a nice little sell off here in Boeing. Another example of a beautiful short move. I do like to short. I will go long if there's no good shorts, but I prefer the shorts. Do I do gaps 24-7? Well, the, I, do, I only trade the U.S. stock market, which has a pre-market and a post-market that I do not trade in and participate. I trade in the live day from 9.30 to 4. But that's all that I do, if that's what you mean. But there's no 24-hour market in the U.S. markets. There's a close and an open. Okay. So I made this little pie chart, and I plopped this in the webinar because I was talking about this in the trading room couple weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, I don't know. Like, if this was your whole day, you get up, you're gonna train, say you're doing this full time, or this is really what you wanna do full time, your whole focus is here. All of this, remember that, you know, this is a pie chart, you know, where you have family, what do you do with your life? Work, family, whatever. So all of this is the time that you should spend on analyzing what you're doing what you're going to trade. Not even in it here. Zip. And this is the time that your focus is in the trade. 
So this defines the way that my brain works. I have all the time that I spend in the pre-market analyzing what I want to do, rating the gap, looking at it, looking for the targets, entry, support, resistance, everything, what I'm doing with it, the cost, all of it, market, everything. All of this time I spend doing all that work. And then I have the trade. So this is the opposite of what most day traders do or any trader. So all the pre-work that I do helps me make this effortless or as much effortless as I can. Now, while there, this is still a piece of the pie where I have to manage the train, this is a small piece if I have done the work properly. This is what makes it a lot easier. Actually, Shelly probably knows this from, from, uh, from emailing me about different ones that we've been in and we've done, okay? where I say, yes, I have conviction in this, or I'm looking for a certain target, because I did all the work already before I even took the trade. Uh, Robert is asking, well, Forex, Forex only has uh, one close of the market and one every day, so you only have one gap a, day, a week, so it's not enough to make money, and I've never traded Forex. 90% or 95% of gaps do not retrace, that's false. I don't know where you heard that, but that's absolutely not true. But that's a misconception. Gap fills as a strategy don't work. So I know people teach that, but they don't work consistently. Remember, how would you even rely on something like this to risk your money Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? You have to be consistent. They absolutely do not, Robert. I've been doing this since 2008. Now that doesn't mean that sometimes you haven't made money doing a gap fill, but as a consistent way to trade, it is not profitable. So again, the consistency counts. So that's why I do all this pre-work, trying to figure it out. What am I doing here? You know, Or what should I do before I get in it? What am I looking for? What do I wanna see? Again, this is the, the work that I'm doing before 9.30, before the open, or I can do it at night. I'm not gonna do any work tonight, I've had a long day, but I get up early in the morning and do everything in the morning pretty, pretty early. So what do I mean by high level? Again, thinking about this as a serious endeavor, which I find that many traders do not. I think the whole news thing that happened a couple of months ago, I don't know if it was January, February, with the whole GME thing with the Reddit traders, that's a good example of people not taking trading seriously at a high level, where they're logging into a chat room with complete strangers and risking their hard-earned cash on trades for absolutely no reason, like not even understanding the philosophy or a strategy or system behind it. If you look at this like a real job, like you sit at a desk, like you're the CEO of your own trading company, okay, and you are in charge of what you're doing and your money, even if you don't have millions of dollars to trade or hundreds of thousands of dollars to trade, but you want to at some point be that successful that you could grow your account to that level. That's how you have to think of it, okay? If that's your goal, that's how you have to think of it. You can't look at it as something like, back and forth willy-nilly that you're not taking seriously. And unfortunately, many people do, okay? Oh, here was the Boeing. This was the mowing that we did back in April. We'll look at this tonight and I'll plop this up and see where this went today. We shorted this at 251, we exited this at 246.70. This was a day trade. 1,100 shares of this. This is a little pricey, but it had a beautiful drop, a beautiful drop in there. You can see from 251 almost all the way down to 246, basically six bucks, $4,730. Let's look at what Boeing did today. Let's see how this went today. I didn't do anything with this today. This capped up with the diamonds today, reversed, fell, fell into support, and is down tonight with everything else. All right, so we'll see where this goes. This kind of was a nothing burger on earnings, which was really disappointing. That had earnings already. Uh, this is, we're in earnings season right now, which is a very profitable time to trade gaps and to trade the market. 
but that was a trade that we did that was a day trade. And again, you can see where you could easily make more than $20,000 a month when you're making 2,000, 4,000 just in one trade. But getting back to the system itself, this is the meat and potatoes of what I do. And again, it's the bullseye. One thing is all you need. One quality system is all you need. That is all you need, one system, one strategy to pay yourself. You can do it as options, you can do it as swing trades, you can do it as day trades. Knowing one good strategy and then getting good at it, really getting good at it. Like for me to know that B, Y, and D, even though the trade was down on Friday, would go this week, that is experience, okay? Understanding the gap, understanding the chart, knowing one good strategy you can replicate over and over for profits can change your trading world. Having one powerful strategy that pays will open up your eyes to the true profit potential of the market. The market can offer you a real lifelong career if you have a strategy that makes money consistently. Professional gaps are high income paying strategy. And that is why I like to do them. Now let's talk about what is a professional gap. A professional gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap. So for example, the QQQ's gap down today, what did we do? We shorted it. It's called a professional gap because professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap. Robert was mentioning gap fills. The only people that do gap fills are retail traders, not institutional traders, not professional traders. So all the trades that I take, I choose to trade with institutional money, not retail traders. Why? Retail traders, for the most part, lose, okay? Very few people that are retail traders are successful and win. So I want to be with the big money that moves the market. Once you understand the system of the market and how it works and how money flows in the market, again, looking for momentum, which is really just money, when money comes in, whether it's buying or selling, once you can see that and find that institutional buying and selling and learn that you can play with it, that's why take, taking a trade is effortless then and making the money is effortless because you're playing with that momentum of the big, big money because retail traders can't move a stock. What happened with GME was an anomaly. I also do not believe that that ever happens again in that particular stock. I've been watching it, looking at it. It's pretty much dead now. So again, to explain, in the case of a bullish gap, professionals are buying the stock. Therefore, the stock moves higher in the trading day. In the case of a bearish gap, professionals are shorting the stock. Therefore, the stock moves lower on the trading day. Okay, so again, we did UPS, which was a bullish gap up, but I do prefer, shor prefer shorting. Why? Because short moves happen quick. Selling is scary. Selling is panic. If you're long something and you get up tomorrow morning and you are down in it, you're going to panic. You're probably going to sell it. If you, are, if you are not in anything long today and you get up tomorrow and the stock's down, you're not going to panic. If you're not in anything long today, but you thought about buying a stock today and you get up tomorrow and the stock is up, you may buy it, you may not buy it, but either way, you're not going to panic, okay? So the panic happens from selling and that action is quick, fast, and very, very powerful and it, it's a great to short against, okay? Just like we did today in the queues. And, and, we, and, and we're selling off tonight. Like I said, we're selling off tonight. And that's more panic coming into the market here in the post market because it's five o'clock. The market closed at four. So I named my gap rating system the golden gap. Finding gaps that rate high per my system are, are professional gaps and it's like finding gold. So I have a 26 point rating system. I take the time to rate it every morning. Go back to the pie chart. That blue is the work that I do in the rating. 26 points is a lot of things. I'm trying to make sure that I get the bullseye every day. Golden gaps are professional gaps. They are gaps that have a high odds of working on the day in the correct direction of the gap with a large momentum move. And by high odds, I mean an 80% win ratio. So that means that I have more winners than losers. I wish that I had never had any losers, but that's not realistic, okay? Part of the odds of trading, of understanding of doing this is that sometimes things happen and you will have a losing trade. That's why I size myself. Otherwise, everyone would just take unlimited risk which is irresponsible, you can't do that. But it's about the bullseye, it's about the high probability. Anything that can put the odds in your favor to trade will give you an edge. And so for me, my system, and all the pre-work that I do, rating the gap, looking at the 26 points, looking at the chart, by the time I get up at seven o'clock in the morning till before the market opens at 9.30, that gives me an edge, okay? It reads the price of the gap and using technical analysis on an advanced level, pinpoints which stock to trade that day and in what direction. 
Or if I don't stand in the light, then I don't do anything that day, okay? I don't use any of those indicators at all, Robert, that you mentioned. The high probability is in the quality and detail in the rating system. It's all just me looking at the chart. This is just full on technical analysis, looking at the information that I'm showing you. Nothing fancy dancy. I'm looking at the price. I actually could read the tape. There's very few traders right now that trade in this day and age in 2021 that could read a tape and make trading choices. I had to do that very often two years ago when I was at Fox a lot. This is before we started doing uh, Skype hits. When I would be in the studio and I didn't have my chart with me, I'd have to look at my phone, see what the price of something was, like the market, and read it and know where it was and make a decision and talk about it. I, I got used to doing that very often from 2017, 2018 into 2019. I could read numbers and tell you where something's gonna be. That's rare. There's no indicator that's telling me that. Nothing. It's your brain. Your brain is the biggest thing that you have and price is very important too. Why? Because that's how you're gonna make money. If you know something is at $10 and tomorrow it's gonna to go to $9, what are you gonna do with that information? That's important information. If you know something is at $10 and it's, tomorrow it's gonna to go to $11, you could go along the stock. That's important information, okay? It is all about price. Again, as an active trader, any news that comes out or things like that happen after the fact and very often they're already built into it or things that you can't, you can't predict, which is why sometimes I might lose in a trade. I, you, there might be a, I'm not in any oil trades right now, but again, you may have a, a cyber attack on an oil pipeline. Nobody could have anticipated that. COVID, nobody could have anticipated that. You know what I'm saying? So things happen sometimes you cannot anticipate. That's trading, that's life. That's why you have to put the odds in your favor and expect that sometimes things won't work out in your favor because that's this is about odds. I'm looking for high odds. That's good enough. And quite frankly, it's good enough for you to be very profitable, okay? But anyways, it takes about five to 10 minutes to rate one gap if you're new. It takes less than five minutes once you become experienced with the system. No, no, I'm, I'm just telling you flat out. There's no leading indicators, no indicators, no nothing. I use my brain in the, tr in the price action. I don't trade ES futures because I'll just short the market if I want to, or I'll just buy a put or a call in the market if I want to. So there's, I don't do anything with ES futures. I'm sure there are people that are in my trading room that are doing futures because it's cheaper than doing uh, stocks on margin. Like today, the QQQs is pricey at over $330 a, a share. People can do what they want. I make the call. You, you use you do it whatever you want to do with it. So I don't, but I'm sure there are other people that are doing that. You know, whatever works for you. Okay. Anyways, who makes golden gaps? We're talking about this. Large institutional money, big traders, banks, hedge funds. And by the way, we were talking about GME. Other hedge funds could have come in and shorted that stock to push it down when all that scuttlebutt was going on. Guess what? Nobody wanted to come in and, and, and support that other fund. And why would they have wanted to? It was their competitor. So they, so they, so they let them get in trouble and go bust. But you know that is a different world. That is a completely different world. If other people wanted to come in to push that stock down, that were institutions to support the one fund that was in there that was having trouble, that was upside down in that trade, by golly, they could have, okay? So the reality is don't mess around with the people that control the market. Know who they are. That's why it's dangerous sometimes, particularly if you're in a trade, in a swing trade overnight, and you're against what's really going on in it. How do you think that so many retail traders lose? because they are doing crazy stuff that doesn't make any sense and don't know how to read institutional money. And also many of them are angry or pissed, like what would happen with the, with the stuff with the GME where they get mad and say, this is, you know, these people are against us or whatever. No, they're just there to make money and understand what it is. It's set up that, that the big money controls the market. It's kind of like saying, well, I don't wanna pay my taxes but I have to pay my taxes. You, you know, people, this is what it is. This is a system. We live in a world. You have to pay your bills. You have to pay your taxes. If you don't pay your bills, you get bad credit. 
You could say, well, I don't care about credit. I think it's, I think it's crap. The way they figure out the credit scores, it doesn't make any sense. It's, a, it's rigged. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I know that from doing mortgages for 17 years, but I absolutely understand the system and how it works and how they score people. But you can't just be in denial of it. Someday you will need probably to borrow money from someone and you will care about your credit score, so you have to pay your bills. It's like we have laws. We have laws and you have to follow the laws. So you go to the, drive a car, there's a traffic stop. The light's red, you have to stop. You say, well, I don't wanna stop, I'm late. I gotta go, I gotta get going. I gotta go through the light, I don't care. No, you have to stop at the light. If you don't, you could hit someone. You could get in an accident, you could get a ticket, okay? Denying what is reality about the functions of society with which we live is never going to get you anywhere. You can be pissed about the way that things are set up in the market, but it only works against you. All that angry energy that you may have being pissed, you could use towards actually learning a good system like mine. Use that energy, use that motivation to actually make money and get somewhere. Okay. Anyways, get back, getting back to what I was saying. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct action to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you will get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, and then you play it. So I don't predict the gap itself, okay? I wait to see it. Then I rate it, then I play it, okay? Like when, I didn't, I didn't look, when is reporting tonight? Actually, let's look at it right now. I'm, I didn't do a trade in this. I, I have no idea where it was gonna go tonight. Actually, let's look. Well, it looks like it's up a little. This looks like a nothing burger though. This is up slightly on earnings. I didn't do it. I'm not, I didn't predict where gaps go. I wait for the gap and I then look at it, determine if I'm going to go long or short. It's not doing much of anything. Anyways, gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. Thus, an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading the side of power and money. That's how, there's no reason to be mad at it. That's how you're going to make money. How do you think the market can fall six dollars? Boom! In you know six and a half hours, institutional money. So you learn it and do it, and you work within the confines of the system. You follow the system. You know, follow the yellow brick road. Don't make it any harder than it is. You take a train. You get in. You get out. You make money. You're done. Boom, boom, ba doop, ba doom. Shelly, did you do the Netflix as Shelly? Shelly didn't do BYND. Did you do Netflix again? I didn't call this today. It was last week. Don't make it any harder than it is. You have to follow the system, okay? Anyways, we did we did puts. This was last week, May 4th, on the I have a newsletter where I call email trades out. You get it into your inbox. We did the queues. Actually, Shelly, did you do this? We shorted the queues. It was last Tuesday. Cost was $325, sold at $660, profit was $8,375 on a risk of 25 contracts, return on investment 103%. You did not have to take this size, you could have taken a smaller size. You could have taken a beginner risk, two contracts, 650 bucks, you could have made $670. This was in, out, in, out. Time of the day I called the train, 917. You don't take the train until the market opens, but you would have been out of it that day. Why we fell that day. I think I have the chart in here, yeah. Is that fourth here Shelly your your typing is stuck I can't see what you're what you're writing well some people uh, Robert's asked me about return on investment I'm always trying to get anywhere from 50 to 100 percent in something if the momentum comes in early, my chances are early in the trade from the time I call it, which was the case in this year, that I'm probably gonna get 100% or even more. If I take the trade in a day and it takes a while to go and a little bit to go and it doesn't go the same day, then my expectations come down to be 50% and I'm happy with 50%. But if it goes fast and quick, then my expectation is 100% or more. Now, some people can't watch the trades. They just put an order out to sell everything at 50% because they can't watch it. 
I do have targets in the email as well, numbered targets that you can look at. But if you can watch the trade, that's the best case scenario. Oh, you did do the cues. Okay, good. So then you made money in this. You didn't do Netflix. Okay. That's fine. We did Microsoft too. Shelly, did you do the Microsoft? This was cheap. This was the same day as the cues. This fell on the same day too. Buck 90, 40 contracts, risk was 7,600, sold at 490, beautiful train, 158% of return investment. I'll show you this chart in a minute. Profit was $12,000 one day, in, out. Boom, to doom. Oh no, it was two days. I'm sorry, this was a two day drop. Take it on the one day, fell. No, this was the one day. Hold on, let me see. It's so hard for me to look here. It's easier for me to pull the chart up. Look on that little one. You didn't do it or you did do it? Shelly. Oh, you didn't. Let me blow this up bigger. Actually, I didn't look at this today. Let's see where this did. I'm sure this fell with everything else. This is taking so long. Yeah. No, that was the same day. Yeah, that was the day we did the cues. Right there. So that was Tuesday. It was Monday, Tuesday we fell. That's when we flipped, we rallied Friday, and here we are back around again. Yeah. It's funny, I was on a marriage train Thursday. I said I liked, I said on a marriage train I liked Microsoft lower. I said I liked Netflix lower. I said I liked a couple of things lower, and we were rallying that day, and I think the girl thought I was crazy. But I was right. Okay, so that one was nice. Oh, here. Here's the chart again. Hope we just looked at it. Anyways, one day of great profits can make your week. So, I mean, if I get up in the morning, I don't see a good gap, I won't do anything that day. Like, I didn't do any new options today, but I had a couple puts already on from the following week. So, this is a nice testimonial from Jackie. She's been with me, I think, about four or five years. She did the golden gap for us. She day trades in the room, and she does the options letter. She does it all. So, again, I think the nice thing about doing options and day trades combined is because if one day we don't get one, you do the other thing, you know? But it's really important to see results. I think that's what keeps people going. I think that's why I have good longevity with my clients. People see results, so they continue to pay to be in the trading room and for the options letter. If you're not making money, though, it's really hard for you to keep going. And if you don't understand things, you have to ask me. One of the reasons the trading room is good is because it's a support system for people to ask questions. And one of the reasons, like I said, people have to take the class to be in the room is so that they understand what to do. You may take the class this weekend and not understand every single thing I say, but you're going to understand a lot of what I say. And then once you start trading, you will understand more, okay? And again, you can do this for options or day trades. We've been discussing that pretty much all day. But income is important. It is nice to take a trade and have a 100% return on investment. That is not every trade. But I think if you're green a lot, that is what is important. You look at your account you know on May 1st and then you look at your account on June 1st and you have more money in it that's what you want okay that's what you want to see you want to see the curve going up so it may go up then you have a losing day or a losing trade then it goes up then you may have two losing trades but you're going up you need to be always going up it's like if you looked at your bank account and you have a savings account. You want to see the savings account grow. You're earning interest. You're making deposits. That's what you want. When you're pulling money out of the market in positive trades, you're making deposits into your trading account from the market. <clears throat> Any questions from anyone here? Kathy, I may go a little bit over. Anyways, making money fast is fun. You saw that today in the queues, although I could have held that trade. I prefer to make money every day by 10 o'clock, though. 
and many days I do, but in, in an ideal world, every day would be like that, seriously. Um, you know, I, I, I just prefer that. I definitely think that once people start trading, again, like I said earlier, and you, you realize that you something you want to do, you can very easily slide off into the negative perspective and then start to believe that you can't do it or there's no way for you to figure it out. That's just not true. You have to have a positive attitude about this. It helps you. A positive attitude is not going to help you make it alone. You still have to have a good trading system. But I absolutely believe that you need a positive attitude about trading and the market and money and you also need a good system. You need all of those things. Being successful is very empowering, particularly if you work for yourself, which I view as some, something if you are trading as an independent activity where you work for yourself. So my trading room is blocked off. I'm the only person that can see comments, questions, anything in my room because it's an independent activity. I think people in groups in these chat rooms tend to uh, hurt themselves and their own personal growth when they're like that. No one cares even though they say that they might, but really at the end of the day, nobody cares if they win or lose except for you. You, this is an independent activity. You have to be entrepreneurial to do this. You have to be independent minded and thinking. And if you are like that, you will probably be very successful with this. Okay. And it is empowering to make money from the market. Okay. At the end of the day, it's you that is in charge of your trading and you that is in charge of your life. Okay. No one's telling you that you have to trade every single day. No one's telling that you have to take every trade I do. No one's telling you have to trade every day, all week, or do whatever. No one's telling you have to trade at all. It's up to you to decide if you want to trade. But by golly, if you want to, then do something to make yourself successful at it. So many people just go off the rails and waste money, chat room to chat room and trading room to trading room and just lose year over year over year. And at the end of the day, they may have small losses day after day, but at the end of the year, it's huge losses that they end up writing off at the end of the year when they do their taxes, which is nuts. Decide you want to be successful and put everything you've got into it, which doesn't mean 24 hours a day, but it means consistently devoting time to it and taking it seriously, like I said, for the time that you spend doing it. If you only have one time, one day a week to trade, then take yourself seriously when you're doing it. Use a strategy to train doing it, not turning on the television and taking a trade that somebody like Kramer says calls on TV is good, you know? You have to take it seriously. So for me, it's the Golden Gap 26 point system. It's a checklist. This is what you learn in my class. You learn the checklist, how I analyze the gap, how I rate the gap. So I devise a rating system for gaps to find the stocks to trade that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, two, big moves on the day, which I like. Okay, we had a bigger move today than expected. Could have stayed in that trade longer. Early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow through on a good risk to reward. Good risk to reward is important for all trades, but again, try not to be a pig with targets. You know, 100% is a good solid trade. You know, to expect two, three, four, five hundred percent 500% in trades is crazy. Don't give it back uh, profits to try to get something bigger that doesn't make sense. Then you have the money to take the next trade. I'm calling a lot of trades. You take it, it moves, you book it. You take it, it moves, you book it, okay? So anyways, the philosophy behind the Golden Gap system is to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. All large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders, okay? But I'm looking at the daily for the rating system and to make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame, which is my entries on the one minute chart. This is a high degree of focus and accuracy because again, you know, I have to be in and out somewhere between 9.30 and four. Using the daily chart to make the decisions for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the direction and using the one minute chart allows for good risk reward trades with accuracy, okay? So the bottom line is it's looking at the bigger picture, but then honing it down. Because again, when you're day trading, you have to be flat. And if you're down in a trade that's a day trade, don't say, well, I'll just hold it overnight and see if it goes tomorrow. No, then you're on either no margin or two to one margin. And if the trade didn't work on the day that you took it, what makes you think it's gonna work the next day? Take the loss, I use stops, and then you get on to the next new trade the next day. Okay, I don't hold day trades that, are, that I'm down in into the following day, and then they turn into be swing trades. I don't do that, no one should do that. 
Anyways, getting back to day trade risk to reward, which is different from return on investment. Return on investment for options is 50% to 100%. That's normal, even though some can be more. Return, reward, risk to reward is if you're risking 100 bucks in a day trade, you should be looking to make 100 bucks, but you could risk 100 bucks and make 200 bucks or more, like the Microsoft that I showed you. I mean, I mean the QQQs that I showed you. So you really have to look at it from risk reward to return on investment, which is two different things, just like you're taking contracts versus shares versus options versus day trades. Again, you can do both. Just don't get mixed up in your head about what you're looking for, for what basically is just a return on your money. But if you risk $1,000 in a day trade, you should be looking to make $1,000. When I say risk $1,000, that doesn't mean the cost of the position. You might take a position where I call the stop could be 50 cents. And if you take 5,000 shares, you're risking 2,500 bucks. If the trade loses, you're gonna lose 2,500 bucks. But the cost of the trade may have been 50,000 on margin. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, then ask me. We do stocks that have low cost, $10 a share, $20 a share. We do stocks that have sometimes high cost like Microsoft, like Facebook, things like that. Even Netflix we've day traded. So you need something called margin or buying power at the broker to do things that are particularly more expensive, but you need them to day trade at all. You can day trade at a retail account. You can also open up something called a prop account. If you don't know what that is, then you can email me or you can Google it and just find out more information, okay? But you can open up a margin account with as little as $2,500, okay? Any questions here so far? Anyways, the Golden Gap strategy uses a rating system which pinpoints opportunity for you to enter before the big move happens. Again, I'm not predicting the gap. That would be impossible. I don't know what Amazon's gonna say in earnings or when or any of these companies. I wait till I see the gap. Then I rate it, then I play it. So getting back to what we were talking about, about making 20 grand a month, really there's five days in a week and you're averaging on your weekly a thousand dollars a day that gets you there but some days you may make more and then some days you may not trade so this is an average i would take it day by day and look at week by week i think breaking it down like that helps people achieve their goals sometimes people say oh my god you know two hundred thousand dollars a year or whatever that's too much i can't even fathom that right now i'm i'm risking a small amount just start and say okay this week i'm going to make fifteen hundred dollars that's it and then you say, next week, I'm going to make $2,000. And you say, the following week, I'm going to make $2,500. And, you know, which basically is 500 bucks a day. So, you know, take it slowly to get to that point if you just can't even comprehend this type of return because you've not been doing well. And, and, and make it something that you can wrap your head around. Like I said, having a good attitude is extremely important when you're trading. And once you know how to make money, once you've taken the class and you're following me and you're in the room and you understand what you're doing, you can set your own course. You can set your own course. I mean, you can trade full time. You can do it on the side. You know, even if you love your job, what you're doing, you could do it on the side. You could do it three days a week. You could do it two days a week. You could do it five days a week. You could do options. You could day trades, whatever you want to do. Personally, I like doing both. But if you're at a certain age in your life where you're not doing as well as you feel you should be financially doing, you know, a lot of people, especially since COVID, you know, they're frustrated. What can you do if you're feeling frustrated? Well, feeling more frustrated is not going to help. Maybe you just have a pity party for yourself. Let yourself feel frustrated one day, get it all out, have a pity party, and then say, this is it. I'm done feeling sorry for myself. I'm done feeling frustrated today. I'm done with a negative attitude as soon as tomorrow morning I get up tomorrow and then you get up the next day and you say I'm gonna do this I'm determined I'm gonna be successful here are the steps that I'm going to take and then you just get over the frustration and you get over the pity party I think a lot of people just live live in this frustration and pity party of money that they've lost to the market for years they wallow in it the self-pity the negative attitude and they never can dig themselves out of it and consequently then they dig themselves a deeper and deeper hole of losses and frustration and it kind of just like is a it's like a cyclone like a tornado like a hurricane 
you, you know, you, you, you're the only one that can pull yourself out of this. It first starts with attitude and determination that you're going to find a person like me that knows what they're doing and then learn what I know and then have a positive attitude and put it to good work and put it to use and ask questions. Be interested in learning, which is also a big part of trading. <clears throat> Any questions here so far? Anyways, talking about job security, COVID, all these things. We're into the second year of this now. Who, who the heck knows? I mean, you know, I'm at the point where I'm focusing on what I'm doing to myself, but the news can really just sometimes make you depressed. Sometimes I think you're better off not watching the news. You know, it can spiral you out of control. Today's world is not the same as 25 years ago, 10 years ago, even five years ago. What we think is a secure job today may be going tomorrow. That's why being entrepreneurial and being independent and empowering yourself is important. Look at the world economy and the decisions that lawmakers are making for you. Do you want to create your own future? Or do you want someone else to determine it? We can be great employees, productive, outgoing, hardworking, and it may not even matter to our employer in the end if the company can't keep you on. You saw that happen last year in 2020. In fact, you're still seeing it now. If a company has poor management, they might fail, or if you have a lockdown, and it has nothing to do with you, or your industry might fail, and it's nothing to do with you. Like years ago, the banking industry was failing. I still continued on, but it was a mess. It was a very tough time to get loans approved when I was doing mortgages, 2007, 2008, 2009. You can create your own job security. You can create your own opportunity by taking it upon yourself to learn how to trade the market and make money trading. And even if you like what you're doing now, you still could do that for some time in the future that you are going to do this full time. Like you could start to do this part time now, knowing that in the future that you will be prepared to do this full time. The more often you make money on a consistent basis, the more confidence you'll build in yourself and the more conviction you will have in your own ability to trade well. One of the most valuable things that you learn during the Golden Gap course is to have conviction in the Golden Gap strategy. So like I have conviction in what I do. I have confidence and conviction. It's all together. This conviction will help you produce positive results. That's the money. And staying positive might be a challenge for some traders, but it is a requirement for success. Again, this is why thinking of it as an independent activity is important. You go to someone like a mentor like me when you have a question, but you have to be in your own world about it. This is a requirement for success for anyone who wants to earn money in the market in any amount. You really, really have to stay positive. And there are people that have money who are negative and they consequently do not grow their money, they end up losing. So not everybody that has money that's trading is successful. There are people that fail at trading that have money. So don't think because you have a small account that you're destined to fail. If you have a positive attitude and a small account, you're better off someone with a big account and a bad attitude because you're just going to lose it. Okay. You saw that happen with the Reddit, some of the Reddit people too. Some of the people in there were risking a large amount of money that did stupid things and bought the stock up at $300 or whatever, and then it tanked and lost a lot, thousands and thousands of dollars. You need the right attitude for any money that you want to make, a dollar, a hundred dollars, a thousand, you know, so why not have the right attitude? And then you learn it, and over time, as your confidence grows and your account grows, and you can risk more. You'll know when it's time to do that. Again, going back to the comfort level. So anyways, I teach my method in a class once a month. The class for May is this weekend. Oh, I apologize. I'm sorry. That's my home phone. It's probably a sales call because I never, never get any calls on my home phone, but it's going to ring now. Anyways, the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It teaches a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. So this is what I do. I get up in the morning, rate the gap. Like tomorrow morning, I don't know what I'm going to rate, but I won't know until I get up. I don't like when. I don't think I'm doing anything with that unless that looks different. I don't want to go long that or short that right now. But I will look for something new, and then I will determine what I'm doing tomorrow morning. The Golden Gap course teaches a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches students how to play the stock on the day. The course teaches students chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. It's a complete system. I teach you the entries, targets, exits, 
I teach you the rating system, how I'm finding the gap, everything. Okay, so it's not like I hold anything back. It's a very, very comprehensive course, but it is a long course. It's all day Saturday and all day Sunday. And we also, um, we also will take a break for, you know, for a, a one hour break for lunch for both days and maybe a short break in the afternoon, but it's a long weekend. Any questions here from anybody else? So I just wanted to plop in here along. This was back in April. I've been talking about shorts. I will go long, okay? This was an expensive long. We entered long the spy. You could have done calls. Entry was 412, exit was 41320. This was an equity trade, 4,000 shares. It ran up 4,800 bucks. This was back in April. Just going back here, I wanna show you where the market gapped up, rallied, gapped up, Rally, 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 rally. So we had a nice little trade in this in here. Doesn't look like much on the daily chart, but at the end of the day, it was a very, very profitable move with a good entry and a good stop. But, you know, I do prefer to short. And if I ever do something in the room that's expensive like this, you can always do a call in it. So you could buy calls. I forget if I did calls that day or not. It was like a month ago. Here, here you can see it. So the whole shebang. And again, the spy made new highs almost today. Got pennies off of it. Actually gapped up. And why did the spy do that? The banks were up. So again, things are not coordinated right now in the spy, the diamonds, and the QQQs. And again, this was another long. Just wanted to show you. I will go long. Sometimes this was Apple. This is a day trade. 133.20 was the entry. Risk 2500 made a little bit over a buck, 135.450, profit 32.50. We did this in here. Closed here, gapped up, boom, rally. In fact, let's look at Apple here today because I did not see where this closed today. Oh. Yeah, this is down tonight. This is gapping down right now. 126.40, close at 126.85. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Any questions here from anybody so far? Anyways, think about what I said tonight. You know, empower yourself to trade in your own world. It's, it's been really convenient to, you, to work from home, especially in the last year. But if you learn how to trade, it can really do it. It can absolutely change your life. It's a process. Some people take the class, they're successful immediately. Some people take the class and there's a learning curve. But, you know, I was highly motivated to change careers when I wanted to get out of doing mortgages. So I did it for myself. And you can do it for yourself or your family, particularly if you want to change your lifestyle and you want to have more time. You know, when I was doing mortgages, I was working seven days a week. If I had been married or had kids back then, I don't think my husband would have been put up with it. And it would have been terrible to raise children. I was working way too many hours. Now I'm done every day in the morning. Or if I'm in an option and watching stuff in the afternoon, I'm still done by four o'clock. Whilst I'm doing a webinar like this. You know, it's, it's a very, very convenient uh, lifestyle. But anyways, you've got to take the time to do it. You've got to take the time to learn. You've got to block out the time in your schedule to be able to do it, okay? The, my system is called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade when and in what direction. And the 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stop. One strategy is all you need. I've been talking about this all day. Think of the bullseye throwing a dart and trying to get that bullseye every time. While you might think that it's impossible, I'm telling you, I do it very often and it is not. It's all about the detail. That's why I'm looking at 26 points. You may say, well, that's an awful lot of things. Yeah, but the more detailed I am, the more times I'm gonna hit that bullseye and get that dart right in the middle there, which is what I want. That's how I can get thousands of dollars, boom, really quickly in a train and then be out. Okay, that's what I'm looking for every single day. 
The class is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, May 15th and 16th. It's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $69.99 U.S. dollars. If you're interested, you must email me for the forms to sign up, okay? Now, I also do a class called the Trends Course with the combo. This is $74.99, so this is on Tuesday, 11 to 3. You save if you sign up for both together, the Golden Gap and the Trends. If you sign up for the class by Friday, which is May 14th, you will receive the Trading Room and the Options newsletter free through July 4th. So that's a nice deal. You get all of May, the rest of May, June, and then into the beginning of July, the newsletter and the trading room free. That's enough time to be able to take the trade calls, be in the room, get the options trades, and then do well. And then if you decide you wanna join the room after, after that or the options newsletter, then that's your choice. Or you'll learn in the class how to do it so you could do it on your own. It's a good amount of time to really be in the room and get the options trades. The class is $69.99, it's $7,000. You can go to my website, it's www.thestockswish.com and see any information. If you have questions, you can ask me now, you can email me. I feel like I'm losing my voice a little bit. Thank you for letting me talk later, Kathy, I appreciate it. I know we started a little bit late today. If you have questions, you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. If you want to come to the open house this week, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. If you want to sign up for the class, you must email me for the forms. Deadline is Friday. It has been a good year. I, I've been very focused. I'm just getting over a cold. I've been sick really for the last month, which I think was allergies. Um, it, it wasn't COVID, but I'm just, just finally getting over it. But, you know, trading and working from home has been extremely convenient, particularly being in New York City here for the last year and a half, I will tell you that. And New York City is nowhere near back to normal. So it's been really nice to work from home. TD, do you have a question? I see you typing. Yes, if you if you want to join the room, email me. If you have questions, email me. Thank you, Kathy. Have a great night.